The following three videos, and I believe one rap song, is an illustration of how the things that you talk about and the environmental factors influence your behavior. Right now, I am not talking about the things that I was talking about. I'm not connecting them in a certain way. What you're going to see is I get angry as I start talking about things and connecting them together. And as I start bringing up more than one thing that really pisses me off at the same time, my anger, my anger level raises. It feeds into my anger. And when I start getting into detail about specific things, I'm going to say this at the risk of getting angry, but I'm going to keep my cool because I have great self-control. When I talk about a police officer saying there's nothing to see here while your wife is getting raped and your child is being taken by CPS to be sexually molested um, by some pedophile who paid off CPS and, and this situation just like this has happened before. Not many times exactly like this, but a variation of it has happened many times, you know, all over the world. Yes, even in America. And so as I, when I bring it to that point, I get extremely mad. Now, this is what you would call, and I know you shrinks really don't like this word, but it is what you would call understandable. Repeat after me, understandable anger. Say you get laid off from your job unfairly, understandable anger. You just caught your wife in bed, in your bed with another man, understandable anger. You just bought a new car and somebody backed into it. Understandable anger. You were on a date and some drunk fucking dickhead spilled some fucking wine on your new white suit. Understandable anger. Need I go on? So that's why when people say you, you're having a bad day. Now, in my case... I talk about things that would make very peaceful men start feeling some type of way. It would make tougher men start feeling more angry. And it would make men who feel like warriors start feeling like going to war. This is the nature of politics. It makes normal men who are geeky feel angry. It makes men who are very aggressive feel like doing something. And it makes men of principle who see themselves as revolutionaries and warriors feel like changing the world by any means necessary. Now, some of you might think that what I'm telling you right now, it's like no shit, Sherlock. You know, there's a reason why I constantly emphasize these things. And I emphatically declare that there is nothing wrong with me because there are people who would have you believe Two things that are very, very destructive to the world. One, that there is something wrong with me. And two, because there is something wrong with me, you should not consider what I have to say. It is the rantings of a madman. And this is what they have historically done for thousands of years. For you people to think that the oppressor has anything but his own best interest and own personal gain in mind when he applies his corporations, his technology, his political apparatus to society, then there is something seriously wrong with you. You are very delusional. If you think that the government has your best interest in mind, you are batshit crazy. If you think that the government wouldn't dream of misusing its technology, you are fucking nuts. If you think that the government doesn't downplay and cover up its mistakes, you're a lunatic. And if you think that when you see, excuse me, when you see the next few videos that I'm about, clips that I'm about to show you in this video, and you think to yourself, well, this guy's crazy. Think again. This is a warrior. This is a tall, strong black man manning up against his oppressor. What goes through a man's mind when he mans up 
against his oppressor. What goes through a man's mind when he talks about the worst atrocities in society? Mass murder, mass rapes, unaddressed social injustices. What goes through a man's mind when he realizes that if he does not do anything, that nothing will be done? How does a man feel about it? And how does a great warrior feel about it? Thank you. Without further ado. Man, you know, I have more than proven my points about, you know, being persecuted for my political beliefs. I'm period. Do I really have to explain how putting 3,300 videos out there, you know, on YouTube and then another couple hundred on Facebook, you know, about the spiritual bottom feeders the Satanists, the worst criminals, the LGBT community, um, the feminists, uh, the atheists, and the racists. Insulting them, perhaps, in that order. Has made a bunch of fucking scum in, you know, the military and, and you know, in those, those people's groups. You know, obviously these people have groups on different websites and blogs and Facebook groups and YouTube channels with all their little friends and their, you know, their little networks. So I don't think I have to explain to you how people have little friends networks and how there's group trolls. There's group trolling. Yeah, I, I believe it or not, there are people called trolls and they obsess with people and they troll on them. And sometimes you get their panties in a real big bunch and they make videos about you and they go the extra distance. And I have on record proof, even if they took the video down, that they've made videos about me. Out of the millions of users on YouTube, they singled me out. Yes. And that is evidence of being persecuted for my political views. Especially when you couple it with the law enforcement harassment. There you go. You know, everything I'm going to talk about in this video is things that I have evidence of. You know, people in the military who are like, hoorah! Or should I say, who saw? You know, them fucking each other in the ass. You know, they say, my military brothers. Or should they say, my military lovers. You know, I mean, these people are fucking effeminate, you know? And they can say, well, you know, what about the fact that we serve our country? You know, the pigs who shoot blacks in the streets all the time, you know, and smuggle drugs in, you know, the COs and the, you know, smuggle drugs in with their staff at the prisons, you know, could say that they're serving their country too. George Bush could have said that he served his country for two terms as the president and he deserves his respect and his, you know, uh, uh, you know, he wants people to feel, you know, honored to have had such a person serve them. You know, he wants to feel the gratification, the satisfaction. So this idea that, you know, that these people, you know, are not fucking persecuting me for my political beliefs is absolutely, pathetically, preposterous. I have evidence. Even if you don't believe the witness testimonies I have in my recordings, which I have proven couldn't possibly have been made up. This is somebody who does not agree with me. This is somebody who's trying to play me out. I have other recordings of them trying to, you know, being a hostile fucking witness if you want to call it that you know this is somebody who doesn't see it my way who for a moment broke down and admitted you know because this person's emotional because they're a female what however you want to see it, they broke down and admitted that yes they were told by the atheist guy the guy who made a video that got 8,000 views and singled me out out of millions of viewers you know of, of YouTube accounts that put their opinions on different things he singled me out and remember atheism isn't exactly the ma a main topic of mine what is secret societies psychiatry see he didn't do it on behalf of my videos about atheism he didn't reference a single video he did it on behalf of big pharma and psychiatry because that's where the money is atheism as a movement really doesn't have any money until they team up with the people who see things the way that they do you know police officers a lot of them are atheists it allows them to do what they do persecute people who are innocent you know harass people who are political dissidents religious people don't do such an atrocious activity does don't partake in such you know deplorable behavior 
Atheists do. Fake Christians do. Lesbians do. Like I've been trying to tell you people for so long. The system isn't just a bunch of random people who are religious that got together one day and said, we're going to do this to get rich. It is people, it is made of people, and it is controlled and oversaw and overseen and, and you know, maintained by people who have philosophies that allow them to do these things day in and day out with very little to no problem at all with doing it. And these people are Satanists, they are atheists, they are LGBT people, you know, who have a chip on their shoulder. These are all the people that have a problem with mainstream society when you really think about it. They don't like the 70 to 80% of Christians in America. They don't like the 1% Muslims in America. They have their chip on their shoulder. They think that your religion oppresses them, so they use the system to truly oppress and persecute the most outspoken among us. You know, people that have like, say, uh, 3,300 videos, you know, people like that. You know, people who make um, Top Martial Artist Challenge, where in the captions, uh, in the annotations, it says that he's being persecuted for his political views and psychiatry pushes white social norms. You know, people like that. You know, attractive, handsome black guys who have made it their life mission to expose the ills in society and the unscrupulous dogs behind them and the pathetic spiritual bottom feeding you know, that takes place and the, and the inferior sentiments and philosophies and cultural values that are affecting us all in such a horrible, harmful way. Oh, that would be people like me, huh? Right, 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 right. You know, when I live 45 minutes away from Coento Pro on record, I live 45 minutes away from MK Ultra on record, and, and I'm dealing with a bunch of cowards who still honestly think that MK Ultra didn't exist and is some kind of conspiracy theory. I, I assure you, there are people out there who think that COINTELPRO was a, was a conspiracy and the government can do no wrong. There still are those type of people. And you know what they'll say? Well, it's not perfect, but they're trying their best. Yeah, they're trying their best, all right, but not to do what you think that they're doing. They're trying their best to oppress and to maintain their power and control. What do you think happens when a bunch of sensitive feminists, you know, these sensitive bearded ladies and fat women and fucking, you know, these these sluts and, you know, and, and these, these sororities and these gay groups, these sensitive skinny men holding hands, wearing thongs and speedos and having weird face paint, you know, walking around and parading around Santa Cruz. What do you think happens when these lowly dogs and their atheist and, 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 and psychiatrist control freak friends feel that their power is being challenged? How do you think they react? And all these rich people with money to throw around. You know, this isn't just happening. I haven't just proved it's happening. It is exactly what you would expect. Those three things are irrefutable to anybody who's been following my video. Ask Benito Abdul how things go down. Ask Illuminata how things go down. Ask Targeted Manchurian. Although he comes off as a little bit different, but aren't we all different? Are we to say that somebody's wrong automatically and to not consider their points just because they're different? In a multicultural society, are we to uphold the social norms of the oppressor in America? I guess so, right? I'm the guy who showed you four psychiatric tests that I've passed, flying colors. There wasn't even the slightest sign of anything wrong. And I explained to you my answers as I answered every question. Keep in mind, I shouldn't have had to do anything of the sort. Because I tell you the truth, my sanity is brought into question. Just like the slaves, you know, they said you have drapedomania because you, they wanted to run away from an oppressive society. They wanted to isolate themselves from an oppressive society. So anybody who would seek to isolate, rebel, or form a maroon colony or a group of revolutionaries must be out of their mind, right? Or is that not the most insightful, honorable human reaction that we see all through history? Isn't that how Americans got here? If you believe that Americans are righteous, which I certainly don't, but I do believe that some of the Americans who came here were honest people who were being persecuted by scum. 
but others were scum who were being persecuted by scum. But some of them weren't so bad, and they came here. Why? Because when you are being oppressed, the normal human reaction is to move away. I believe it's called hijra in Islam, to move away. But once it's a new world order, once it's a global event, it's a worldwide phenomena, then what are you supposed to do? There's nowhere to go. Your back is against the wall and a bunch of scum are pushing gay agenda. Oh, you, you think there's no gay agenda? Look at Hollywood. Look at all the gay CNN actor, uh, anchors. CNN is probably the major news outlet in America. I don't know. You know, I've heard different things about it, but it probably is. And you have a bunch of gays. Okay, that, that black guy, Anderson Cooper, that, that priest he has on, and so on and so forth. And then those females. Now, I don't know for sure. But I suspect at least a few of them are at least bisexual, if not lesbian. Okay, the CEO of Apple, Google staff, YouTube staff, openly homosexual. Take one look at it. That's a lesbian. That's a gay guy. No mistake. No possible way to mistake. Hollywood. And 180,000 homosexual sexual assaults annually in the military. Daily Mail. Mainstream news. I mean, come on, people. The home of the free? Or the home of the oppressed? And oppressed by who? People always want to talk about the oppressed. What do these people believe? Some of these people are neoconservatives. But what is a neoconservative? It is somebody who used to be a Democrat. A Nazi boy who decided to go in the closet to become a conservative so he can aggressively push, quote-unquote, democracy, which on record, even Marx and Engel brought it up, that communists seem to attach themselves to Democrats and social Democrats. On record. Such as in France. I pointed that out in my other video. So what we have here, we have a worldwide communist takeover under the guise of democracy, and that is exactly how Marx and Engels said that they would do it. And they said that they would use the Hegelian dialectic to help them achieve this goal. In the Communist Manifesto, probably the most famous manifesto ever written, and there's gay manifestos and other ones, but we won't get into those. Probably even one of the famous, most famous books ever written, but we won't get into that. It's translated into Spanish and French and Greek and all, you know, it, it gets around. It circulates very well, very efficiently. And in the Communist Manifesto, they said, we're going to break down the family. We're going to make women, you know, we're going to liberate women, quote unquote, which means we're going to create free love. And their argument is that free love already exists. Those of you women who, you know, have been loyal to your husband, you should be completely disgusted. Especially you middle class women. You should be completely disgusted. He's saying that you're a bunch of whores, that you all cheat on your husband, and all he's trying to do is to bring it out in the open and make it socially acceptable. On record, that's what he said. Abolish private property? You know, and, and what, do we all own everything? You know, do we all own the TV? Do we all own the fucking land that your house is on? I mean, how can you fucking do that, right? It's got to belong to someone. Oh, that's right, you want it to belong to the fucking government. And is that not what we see? Big government becoming bigger? You know, I'm not saying the Republicans are right about everything. I'm not saying the Democrats are wrong about everything. I'm saying that the way this is going is we are headed for a communist world government with very fascist ideas, sentiments attached to it, and very Nazi eugenist, eugenicist styled healthcare, especially in mental health. Who are the Nazi doctors? Mostly a bunch of fucking shrinks doing psychiatric and psychological experiments on fucking Jews and political dissidents. Now, I am so sick of you Pathetic cowards missing the point. The Jews were only in caps because they fell under the category of political dissidents. That's how Hitler justified doing experiments on them. The twin studies. Dr. Mengele. Read a fucking book. Ernest Rudin. Ernst Rudin. Read a fucking book. Franz Kalman. And some of these people doing it were Jews. 
studying under Nazis, coming to America, Project Paperclip, on record, not a conspiracy theory. This is how you got the V2 fucking rockets, Werner von Braun. Rocket science. You see, it's not rocket science. And rocket science is Nazi fucking science. Thank you very much. That's what Nazis do. They kill people. Shrinks, Nazi science, kill people. Rocket science, kill people. Of course, it, it eventually evolved into the atom bomb, the hydrogen bomb, and so on and so forth. And so we dropped Big Boy and Fat Boy on uh, uh, Hiroshima, uh, Nagasaki. Come on! Part two, okay? I'm gonna attach this all in one video. You know. So we have a bunch of unscrupulous dogs killing everybody on record. I put it together for you. And I'm not, this is not some, this is not, you know, a lot of the conspiracy theorists will say, look at this, look at this. You know, I'm, I'm saying, look at what they have said. Not what some random guy said in a speech on TV. Which does seem to bring credence to it, but it doesn't, it's not proof positive. Okay, Engels and Marx and Weishaupt had plans. So did Pike. And motherfucker Pike has a statue in Washington fucking D.C. by Lincoln Memorial, I believe it is. And motherfucker Pike has statues in Masonic lodges all over the fucking world. And the Scottish Rite, which Pike made the rituals and ceremonies for. And who was he? He was a Confederate general that hated blacks and hated Jews, but what he hated most were black Jews. Who was Marx? He hated blacks. He hated religious Jews because he was a Jew by blood, an atheist synagogue of Satan Jew, but we won't get into that in this video. And who did he hate most? He hated Jews with Negro blood. Racist fucking communist dogs. Racist Masonic fucking scum. Racist Nazi fucking scum. And who did they hate most? And who did they test on? They tested on Jews with Negro blood who were political fucking dissidents. That's who they hated and wanted to test and screen out the most. And of those who they hated the most, the most of the people they hated the most were the most outspoken, the rabble rousers, the uppity Negroes. People who are like the top martial artist trying desperately to get his message out so he can save the world. People like that make their expressions turn very bitter. You would think that they were sucking on a fucking lemon for three and a half hours. Their face expression just puckered, bitter, fucking evil. The fuck you think this is? The fuck you think this is? I have proven this shit, you bitches. Don't you understand the difference between a crazy man ranting and raving for no apparent reason? Between a delusional fuck pacing back and forth, homeless in the fucking downtown fucking L.A. or something? And a motherfucker who has proven it with witness, testimony, and their own fucking books? Oh, but he's getting worked up. I am a fucking black Jew. The descendant of Jews. I'm a Christian who's a descendant of fucking Jews and a black man and a fucking rabble rouser, according to them. And you're surprised when the fucking Jews who turned their back on the Jews who went to the camp are now turning their back, not only turning their back, they're turning their back to plot with the people who are out to get me. That's why they're turning their fucking back. It's, oh, he has delusions of being persecuted. He has delusions of being persecuted. Motherfucker has a video with 10,000 fucking views going out of his way to try to play me out as a nut fucking ball. And this is delusions to you? I passed the test with flying fucking colors. I have a better score than almost anybody who takes those fucking tests, but I'm delusional to you? Bunch of fucking shrinks whose job it is to persecute political dissidents and to push Big Pharma's fucking pills for kickbacks can't agree on what is wrong with me and I'm delusional to you? A bunch of fucking dumbass Americans are completely out of touch. They're completely oblivious, oblivious to the fact 
that their military is a bunch of Nazi boys popping each other in the ass. And I would remind you, I've been saying this for at least three years before that article came out in Daily Mail. I said, these people are Nazi boys. They're popping each other in the fucking ass. They're trying to use quote unquote gay bombs on people. And I have the documents for those as well. Thank you very much. A bunch of Havera agreement bitches. Thank you very fucking much. And I have the documents, motherfucker. But he's delusional. So when you're being persecuted by the people in charge, automatically it falls into the category of delusional. You see one of those tests they have to say, if you feel like you're on a, you know, if you're, you're on a special mission for the FBI or CIA, you know, then check here, you know, do you feel like that? I don't feel like that. But the thousands of informants on fucking record could say that and they would be correct. So if they were then to turn around and say, well, the FBI and CIA wanted me to persecute this black guy with over 3,300 videos who's a top martial artist that none of these pussy fucking nasty boys and muff-munching feminists in the military and the intelligence community and the local pigs could be in the fucking ring in their pathetic homoerotic ritual having secret society fucking lodges. You would say that there's something wrong with them. They're delusional. If any one of those informants were to come out and say what is the truth, if any one of those COINTEL pro informants who never ceased being informants were to come out one day and try to clear their fucking conscience, you would say that they're crazy. And a bunch of Kool-Aid drinking, fucking drug-using, alcoholic football fans with the he's right, that guy is strange, bunch of Homer Simpson type motherfuckers telling me a software engineer, the top martial artist, and one of the most insightful people in the fucking country that I'm delusional. That you know better than me about my mental state when I have 3,300 videos. You could round up all the shrinks in America and I'm smarter than all those bitches. What the fuck is wrong with you people? You know, I'm, I'm the son of two doctors and I tried hard to do the right thing. I went back to college. I went to college several times. And during the course, you know, the media and, you know, being alienated from society and a lot of things, you know, psychiatric drugs and perhaps some of my own shortcomings as well, kept me from doing too well in school. You know, being fucking dosed up on shrink fucking drugs and smoking marijuana and drinking alcohol didn't help, you know. I, I made the, the same mistakes that a lot of people in my shoes or, you know, a lot of black men my age have made. And a lot of people from all sorts of races. And so I, I, I kept going back. I kept going back. De Anza. I kept going back. Uh, Gilroy. Uh, Gavilon. I kept going back. And finally, I graduated. I went back for four years. Over four years because I was sent to the fucking psych, psych ward for petty ass shit. And then I got very mad. And I made a video, you know, that they interpreted as a fucking threat. And I was sent back to the fucking cyborg. And I believe that was the last time. One time in my life that was the closest thing to deserving punishment, perhaps, was when I was extremely pissed off about every other time and I fucking just told them how I felt about it and what I was going to do about it. Okay? In a very definitive way, some would argue. But it wasn't even that video that they cited, but that's a story for another day. A story that I've told already several times so you know when somebody has been done wrong the normal reaction is to be angry and when we get angry our speech pattern changes when you're persecuted by lowly scum for trying to do the right thing that's why I'm gonna put this video first before the other two angry outbursts, so you can truly understand why this guy's so angry. If you can't tell by what I'm talking about, a lot of my viewers can. My nigga Benito, there's many people just like me who say, hey, I know why this guy's mad. I have interviews where people saying, yes, if I was in your shoes, I would be mad. I have interviews where people say that I'm somewhat in your shoes and I'm fucking would be mad if I fucking was a warrior taking it like you do. You know, a lot more, you know, their, their personality is more relaxed to begin with. 
you know, such as, you know, a priest, sometimes, you know, none of my priests, but this one guy is kind of like a Rastafarian guy, you know, that's how he comes off, kind of like Bob Marley style. So Bob Marley could probably take this whole lot better than Mr. T, for instance. But are we to then say that, hey, because Mr. T does not act like fucking, you know, a Shaolin monk when faced with this, this, this situation? That he has the characteristics of a fucking tough guy and reacts like a tough guy? That, hey, there's something wrong with him. I'm a badass motherfucker. And if you don't get that, you're a dumbass. You're a fucking idiot. You understand me? Need, need I remind you again? Need I remind you again? I'm the type of motherfucker that could fucking kill you before you even fucking knew what hit me. You're fucking dead. Fucking dead before you even know what the fuck happened. You understand me? I'm that type of motherfucker. So how the fuck do you think this type of motherfucker takes the type of bitch shit that's been going on from a bunch of satanic scum and spiritual bottom feeders? Come on. I mean, we see cops who are half the fucking man I, I am on TV all the time shooting people for little shit. They see a suspect running away, they shoot him down. And they're all pissed off and worked up. It's okay when the oppressor gets mad and their speech patterns change and their fucking demeanor changes, but when a political activist who's actually trying to save people, not oppress people on behalf of the top 1% gets upset, he must be fucking delusional. There's no oppression going on here. It's a pig saying there's nothing to see here. Why, he's raping your fucking mom. CPS is taking your kids to get their shit pushed in by some pedophile secret society bitch who has paid him under the fucking table. He says, there's nothing to see here. Keep it moving. And like a good little bitch, you keep it moving. But I'm the type of motherfucker that would stab him in the fucking eye and push it in till his fucking brain. And say, you piece of shit, you don't oppress me. You don't fucking oppress me. You don't fuck with me. And so you're supposed to hold that against me because I'm not a bitch? Because I haven't been dumbed down and fucking weakened and effeminized by a bunch of Nancy boy gay Bob bitches in secret society? And you're going to hold that against me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Just trying to get it through your head how ridiculous it is. I'm the fucking good guy. They're a bunch of fucking shit pluggers. And they're sickos. They're a bunch of serial killer shit pluggers. And the military is covering up for them. I go as far as to say part of the reason that a lot of women are raped in the military and nobody does anything is because they're, 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 they're covering up for the shit pluggers. The shit pluggers have said, hey, you know what? If they do something about the women being raped, they're going to do something about the men being raped. So we got to conspire with a bunch of satanic dogs and oppressive filth in the military to make sure that nobody does anything about it. Because we want to keep plugging shit. Not me. I'm saying it in their words. Because they want to keep plugging shit. These motherfuckers. So when people say that homosexuals are possessed by the devil, well, guess what? They're not very far from the fucking truth. They're possessed by the spirit of wickedness. What do you think happens to somebody when they say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna do this evil shit. You know, when somebody sees a, a, a fine bitch jogging on the jogging path and a rapist is in the bushes, he's like, what, what do you think it, you know? He's in a mind state of evil. Another way you can put it as evil has, he's been overcome by evil. He's been seduced by this, his evil thoughts. He's been almost possessed he's being controlled he's in the he, he's allowed he's like yes this evil and i embrace it and i'm gonna rub i'm gonna blank this fucking slut you know shaking her booty while she's jogging wearing some tight fucking slut shit so yes i would describe it as being possessed by some sort of evil and satan does come to mind so i don't think saying that they're possessed by satan is far from the truth they're in a sick state of mind it's not their race it's not their economic class there's pedophiles in the fucking church there's pedophiles in the top one percent there's pedophiles in the fucking ghetto there's pedophiles who are law enforcement agencies bankers lawyers and so on and so forth there's rapists in the military who are officers it is not because they're poor they are the oppressors. It is not because they are oppressed. They are hardly oppressed. Their fucking gay marriage has been legalized. You call that oppression? They are sick. And that sickness sometimes manifests or culminates into sexual depravity. Other than plugging each other in the ass and fucking tossing each other's salads, of course. And they rape people. 
and they sexually assault people in prison. I assure you, these people right now, either in prison or in the military somewhere, someone's getting their shit pushed in. While you people sit there saying, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Why do you think homosexuality used to be on the list of mental disorders? Because before psychiatry completely sold out to Big Pharma, when it was still in the process of doing so, there were honest people who honestly got into it and they honestly did some fairly okay work. But the rest of the scum turned it to the fucking wolves, handed it over to a bunch of wolves, vipers, serpents, pedophiles, feminists, faggots, fucking military, military industrial complex, military psychology, and so on. They turned it over to the psychop bitches. By the time it was turned over to a bunch of demons, whatever little good left was gone and homosexuality was removed as a mental disorder. Look it up. It was what? Uh, I think it was 73 or 74. It was removed. A bunch of gays in San Francisco. You know, the Grand Lodge of Masonry, San Francisco. A bunch of gays in San Francisco using their military cloud and making a big fuss and you know, and as we, when, all, when the smoke cleared, there was a bunch of gay people helping the government do psychops, psyops. Um, you know, the the mind war uh, document from that faggot uh, uh, Michael Aquino came out of the Army Presidio-based psychological warfare unit in San Francisco. The Satanic Movement, the Temple of Set, you know, Aquino, Anton LaVey's friend, Church of Satan, you know, San Francisco. Gay rights movement, San Francisco. One of the major hubs of the feminist movement, San Francisco, where my older brother was beat up because he was my brother, San Francisco. And there's a lot of suspicious things I'm not going to mention because we're sticking to the facts. The facts spill out the situation quite clearly. San Francisco should be fucking nuked, you know? There's a bunch of just rich, greedy scum. You know how much it costs to live there? They're all a bunch of bourgeoisie faggots, and they fucked up the whole fucking world from this queer fucking sodomite city. San Francisco is Sodom, and Hollywood is fucking Gomorrah. And that's how it is. It's complete fucking scum. And New York is fucking Babylon. Queers everywhere. I'm going to end it right there. I talk about gang stalking includes police and secret societies and organized crime and um, I talk about gangs, street gangs, biker gangs. I've named that you know many times. Now listen to this news clip uh, about the Fox Lake police death. White referring to the would-be hitman, a gang member. We had to do some some backtracking and some digging but it was very clear through the text messages that he was looking at wanting to speak with a high-ranking motorcycle gang member Investigators also say Glinowitz alluded to planting evidence on someone. Police found cocaine in an unmarked evidence bag in his desk, though the autopsy on him showed no traces of the substance in his body. Personnel records tarnished the hero status he acquired in the days following his death. Records showing numerous suspensions, nearly a dozen violations of rules and procedures, and allegations of intimidation. In one incident, a dispatcher said that Glinowitz told her that she needed to stop her behavior or he, quote, could put three rounds of bullets in her chest. In another, Glinowitz is reprimanded for leaving a crime scene unattended. And in a new twist, sources tell CNN authorities are now investigating Glinowitz's widow, Melody, and one of his sons in their role in the embezzlement of thousands of dollars from the Explorers Youth Program. In an interview with Crime Watch Daily last month, Melody Glinowitz detailed her role in the program. His big concern was this officer who staged his suicide after embezzling funds this may have been plotting a murder, according to authorities. And right, so he was, he was okay. Let's, let's, let's truly break this down and compare it to my quote unquote assertions or allegations, you know, of collaboration between law enforcement and criminal gangs and let's really focus on why they think they can get away with it and not just why they do get away with it but why they think they can get away with it okay this guy he knew he was in over his head he was doing what a lot of other police officers do all the time if you look at you know i also like to point out well let me finish my sentence if you look at um the history of 
getting in trouble you know he intimidated the dispatcher and so on and so forth and you know all this stuff he has long uh, he's been reprimanded and reported and you know written up many times and this clip came out today which is november 6th so i've been making these claims long before this clip came out i said law enforcement collaborates with gang members and they have threatened to set me up this law enforcement officer was about to set somebody up and threaten somebody else. And he put a hit out on somebody else. I say law enforcement works with mental health and all these different groups. And they disarm you so that you're at the mercy of their gang member allies. And I used to be a gang member and I know this beyond any doubt. And I've been saying it many times over and over again. Very upset. Which obviously is an understandable reason to be angry. So with this Fox Lake, you know, Glenowitz case, you know, the only reason this is really in the news is because he went way overboard. And we know he went way overboard because all this didn't come out until when? Until when? Until he faked his death. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. He did die, but he faked the manner in which he died. All this didn't come out. It may have never came out. That is key in all this. I have been telling you this type of stuff for years. I'm the top martial artist in California. That's what I said in the video, but I'm actually in America and I'm being persecuted for my political views. One day, all the stuff that I've been telling you will be fact. It will be mainstream fucking history. And all you bootlickers that try to stop me will go down in history as the scum you are and your political groups. I hope for your sake that you're not on record anywhere being part of any of the spiritual bottom feeding movements that I'm talking about. Because they will be exposed as the dogs they are even if they manage to pull off what they are trying to do. Well, they drugged my fish. And I feel like fucking shit, basically. Um, for whatever reason, I'll explore more in the comments. I passed out again early during the day. <clears throat> At four o'clock or so. And when I woke up, well, I woke up to the phone call. Gosh, this fucking headache, man. It really just hit me right now, too. I was feeling weird and sick already. As I started, anyway. I woke up to the phone call, and my mom said, there's fish ready. I go downstairs, my brother and my mom are there. I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe they just fucking honestly wanted to tell me about the fish. You know, but no. After all these people have done to me, how they're playing stupid about the gassing, they're still drugging the fucking food. And it's just extreme hatred came over me. And then this fucking headache. You know, then feeling sick, and then the fucking headache. And what's gonna happen is, probably in about 20 minutes or so, you know, there's gonna be an intense hatred. Usually works like that. Usually either it either hits hard, and the hatred is delayed, or it doesn't hit so hard and the hatred is immediate, you know? And so I have to deal with fucking headaches and hatred and so on. Um, it's what time right now, it's about six o'clock. Uh, it's 11 6, 2015. Now these people are lowly dogs and you know, my family's a bunch of fucking traitors. You know, there's been times where I try to fucking, you know, downplay it because nobody likes to put it like that, you know. Nobody likes to put their own fucking family on blast. But they're fucking traitors. And then you have scum and mental health, you know, and the government. You know, remember pretend like I didn't just pass four fucking tests with everything that they could possibly accuse me of. And every other fucking, fucking disorders related to one of these, you know. And they're gonna act like fucking that somehow, you know, I'm magically mistaken about these horrible headaches I get after being drugged. As if we don't fucking know when we're being drugged. As if a guy who smoked weed for many years magically wouldn't know the difference between being sober and being fucking drugged. I mean, just fucking stupidity. Not to mention being on and off psych fucking medications. 
for fucking 20 fucking one years. But of course these bootlickers would have you believe that and you gotta realize how, how, how lowly you would be to believe it. You know. And so when the hatred comes, you know, We all know that, you know, no matter what happens, let's say, you know, for the sake of argument, let's say one day I flipped out and fucking started killing a bunch of people. If you do not understand that the government, the Santa Clara County Mental Health Services, Valley Med, La Silva Outpatient, fucking Momentum for Mental Health, if you don't understand that fucking the Santa Clara County Sheriff Department and all these the FBI and all these bootlickers are fucking complicit, you know, you're a fucking dumbass. You're a fucking idiot. I have no patience for you whatsoever. You know, do you really think I'll be feeling like this at fucking, uh, was it, 6 o'clock uh, Friday night? You know, not even Friday evening, not even Friday night. You know, when I'd be fucking tired as a fuck, when I'd be sick as a motherfucker, you know, after fucking taking a fucking two hour fucking nap. I mean, just complete madness, you know. I'll tell you like this, you know, if you rape, if you see a shrink and you rape her and you think she's cute, you know, more power to you. I respect you a lot. You see an ugly old fucking shrink and you bash their fucking head with a sledgehammer. I respect you, more power to you. You know, anybody in mental health, as far as I'm concerned, is an enemy to, of, of mankind. And, you know, they're far lower than the terrorists. The terrorists at least have a good reason to be upset. A lot of them think that they're fighting for God or whatever. They at least have a good reason to do what they do. Mental health kills far more people than terrorism, and they have nothing but greed and evil and fucking just, just complete scum. And, you know, no matter what you do to them, you know, it's the same with the pigs, you know, just complete corrupt fucking scum, you know, not doing their fucking... I mean, the pigs arguably are worse than mental health because it's their job to regulate these dogs, and instead they're fucking helping them, you know? It's the same with the drug trade. It's their job, the DEA and all these fucking scumbags that regulate the drug trade. Instead, they're helping them. Same thing with legal fucking drugs. A lot of former FBI and scum like that work for the Pfizer Global Security and shit like that. And, you know, the FBI is supposed to regulate these dogs. Instead, they're fucking helping them. You know, I'm telling you, there's nothing that is too harsh for these lowly fucking dogs. And, you know, I would fucking show you, read from the list to tell you who they are. Because I have a list on the fucking wall. But I'm too fucking sick to even get up right now. You know, so fucking I'll end it there. And you know, it might even take me more than 20 minutes, it might even take me an hour to recover. But when it does, I'll be swollen up with fucking hatred. And that's probably the main reason why they had my fucking brother move back in under the pretense that fucking his landlord flipped out and fucking this whole drama. I don't like it, you know. And that's why his friend supposedly magically, you know, after, after complaining about how much it sucks to live in the middle of nowhere and, you know, how he would hate to live here, he wants to move an hour, uh, excuse me, a mile further down the road, a mile further away on a private road, make it even more of a bitch than where I live, you know, to get to fucking, you know, the city and where you want to go. You know, and again, I don't want to get into that shit too. I've gotten to it. You know, got it. You see how my fucking speech patterns all fucked up? I mean, just a bunch of complete scum in psychiatry. You know, just just complete cowardice. You know, you see cowardice everywhere, and I call it how, it's, uh, how I see it. You know, there's cowardice in my fucking family. They bootlick to the New World Order. You know, I would go into fucking detail more, but you know, I'm, I'm, I don't I don't really feel like going into more detail than I have already. But you know, my family, they might try to be civil and all that, but ultimately they're fucking bootlickers. You know. There's cops and fucking trying to be civil with you while they're setting you up. There's gang members trying to be civil with you while they're fucking setting you up to die. I mean, you know, should I really let that fucking, you know, change anything? You know, how what I think about it or what I, how I report it to the fucking my viewers? No. They sold out to the fucking New World Order. They're just perhaps not as bad as the complete lowly dogs in mental health, you know? Are not as bad as the Santa Clara County Sheriff Department, whose job it is to fucking regulate this. The federal authorities who are supposed to regulate, you know, the fucking scum in the pharmaceutical industry, and they're turning a blind eye, and, you know, to the co collaboration with meth fucking dealers and big pharma, and just just complete fucking trash everywhere. You know, America is just complete scum. I mean, to put it simply, this is this is part of the American system of corruption. 
The whole fucking country's a bunch of scum. You're all pussies for not standing up to these people. And I'm practically doing this by my fucking self. While all you bitches are con either control opposition or just complete pussies who don't need to be controlled because you're too busy fucking sucking dick, bootlicking, bending over for scum, whore, gold digging fucking bitches. Just complete fucking cowards. You don't have even a shred of the fucking heart that I have. You don't have a fucking cell of the heart that I have. You're a bunch of pussies. You're a bunch of fucking cowards. You wouldn't fucking, you know, you wouldn't fucking, you know, walk down the street for what you believe in, much less walk in my fucking shoes for fucking 21 years. You're a bunch of pussies. While I was doing time in reform school and boot camp and fucking jail and fucking psych wards for fucking being a political dissident, you pussies were sucking dick and kissing ass and tossing salad. You're a bunch of bitches. As I predicted, it took about 20 minutes or so. I was swollen up with hatred. And I was able to, you know, easily work out a lot easier than ever before. It seems that this is a higher concentration, you know. Whenever they give me this specific drug, there's a lot more hatred than, you know. And as a result, you know, I was able to work out with ease. Um, and the purpose of this video, I didn't mean to put so many clips in, the, in this, this next video, but this has to be said. I'm gonna leave this video up for a while. I know I look like shit, I know the lights distorting my fucking features and whatever, okay? The government wants me to do bad things. I think we all know that. They want black people in general to be drug dealers, to be rapists, to be thugs. It's programs from Hollywood and the entertainment industry. Whether or not you believe there's secret societies there, let's just keep this very simple, very, you know, very common sense, okay? These people push drugs and guns in the communities, and then they turn around and arrest people for them, okay? Gangs are secret societies, for the most part. They're not secret societies in the sense of they they teach knowledge and so on on the streets. Their secret societies in the sense of their lodge is the prison system. The prison system is highly Masonic and the prison gangs propagate the despicable falsehoods that the, uh, the, Mason, the Masons and all them push, okay? I was a crib for many, many years. Because of my revolutionary stance, even while I was gang banging, I was kept in the dark about certain things. We all were. There isn't a single crip in America that can honestly tell you that there weren't some things that they were kept in the dark by, by the gang members who were incarcerated for, you know, for triple life and for whatever, okay? And even those guys, including those guys, they, they know that there's things that they're kept in the dark about, okay? We've all known that. And so when I finally broke off with the Crips and they knew that they couldn't influ influence me like that. You know, when I was banging, you know, any, at any point in time, they could, you know, send an older G across my path. And he would, he would kind of say, you know, they, they'd come at me like, look, you got to understand the rules to the game. And they would always, always come at me like this, okay? To make a long story short, there's so many stories about being a crypt. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not trying to glamorize it. It's very despicable. Some of the biggest mistakes I made in my life, probably, you know, the fifth or sixth biggest mistake I made in my life was being a crypt, you know, and, and thinking that somehow we were revolutionaries or something when we were just pawns being played by a bunch of lowly dogs. And I was the voice of fucking reason. I've described myself as that many, many times. I was the voice of reason. They were the voice of treason. And their voices drowned out mine because there was a lot more of them than there was of little old me trying to fucking talk reason into people. And as a result, I was always, always, always fucking hated on. Even though I had more respect for violence, and that's why I was chosen for this psychological operation that I have proven factually. I have proven with historical evidence, I have proven with witness testimony, I have proven with fucking testimony of, of, of ta other targets. I have proven this beyond any doubt, that I am the target of a government psychological operation. And anyone who doesn't understand that irrefutable fact is a fucking moron. Look up Surviving Sidhu. 
I was under heavy mind control at Sidhu Reform School. Reform schools are mind control behavior modification facilities. The difference between a reform school and the juvenile hall system is there is an extra emphasis on mind control and mind control substances, aka psychiatric medications. Okay? Heavy, heavy mind control. When I left reform school, I was one of the most hateful people on the streets. Violence was not a fucking issue with me. They did things such as we would scream at the fucking ground when we were angry. And over the years, well, guess what? I scream when I'm fucking angry more than everyone else. Because we did this certain type of therapy, I forgot what it's called, where we would scream at everything that we hate. And that never left me. The violence that I learned at SEDU and at Ascent Boot Camp never left me. I was taught by a bunch of Nazi methamphetamine-affiliated drugs, drugs that are similar to meth, you know, pushing scum, to be a very hateful, violent soldier of the New World Order. Period. And if you don't understand that, you're a fucking idiot. These people, I've offered thousands of dollars that they can... I've, there's over $100,000 in different challenges for them to disprove different key points. They can't do it. They know without any doubt that I'm telling the truth. They know that the fucking Jewish looking guy, I don't know what he was. He looked like a fucking Ashkenazi Jew, but he might just be a white guy with a hooked fucking nose. I don't know. But he was from San Francisco, the, where the Grand Lodge of Masonry is. He, he it was a self-help guru is what he was known as, you know. And everyone knows that these philosophies come from secret societies. Okay, he was a secret society scumbag. I don't fucking know what secret society he belonged to, but he was definitely influenced by the fucking culture of the 60s and 70s and whatever he was, whatever time he was in, in San Francisco, where all that satanic stuff and occult stuff was popular. He teamed up with a bunch of military industrial complex and law enforcement fucking scum on record. Okay, the head of security at SIDU was a fucking former bodyguard for the Italian mafia, a huge Italian guy. You people are just complete morons if you don't understand what I'm telling you, okay? I was groomed by a bunch of fucking gang members in the street, and I was under heavy mind control at fucking Cedar, and then at Valley Medical Center, Fremont Hospital. You see these bootleggers trying to stop me right now? They're trying to stop me from telling you this. Hello? Hold on a second. Just real quick. And that's a perp calling me from across the fucking country to interrupt this. They don't want this to come out. The government has pumped very violent drugs into my fucking fish. Okay? And they have my parents administering it. I don't fucking know why they go along with it. Maybe they told me, hey, your son is sick and blah, blah, blah. I've been to the psych ward and fucking Fremont Hospital. I've been to fucking Mills Peninsula. I've been to John fucking Muir. I've been to fucking La Selva outpatients under Momentum Mental Health, and this is huge outpatient service. These motherfuckers are a bunch of drug-pushing scum. Eli Lilly Bush, Bush family CIA connection. Look at the connections. They speak for themselves. I mean, these are the type of connections that you don't even need the fucking details. You can just tell by who the bad guys are that it's more than just fishy. It is what I say that it is. I'm not under, no, they're, they're, I'm not under, I'm not on some special FBI, CIA mission. No, but I am being fucking under heavy, heavy mind control in a psychological operation that has been going on and off my entire fucking life. And in the last fucking, ever since I got into University of Phoenix, it intensified for whatever fucking reason. Okay? Heavy mind control, psych ops trying to get me to do horrible, horrible fucking things that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do anything that they want me to do. There's going to be bootlickers saying, well, because he believes this thing's a dangerous sight. You know, if that's what you believe, you can come fucking get me. Come get me and we'll see what happens, you bitches. I'm fucking sick of this shit.